For centuries, the story of humanity has been told as a tale of one victor, Homo sapiens, the only surviving human species on Earth. The traces found in icy ravines and in the silence of ancient caves all point to the same conclusion. We endured while the others vanished. But what if that ending had taken a different turn? Imagine a world where the dominant species wasn't us, but the Neanderthals, robust people with broad foreheads and deep-set eyes who once ruled the frozen landscapes of Europe. Would our planet still have the internet, spaceships, and towering skyscrapers? Or would it remain a place of hunting tribes dwelling in cold forests? If history had truly shifted in their favor, what would have changed at the root? Not only the outward appearance of humankind, but the way societies were built, the path technology took, and even how we experienced art, language, and emotion. Neanderthals had brains wired differently, bodies designed to withstand glacial winters, and a lifestyle of hunting and gathering that was more enduring than ours. A world led by them might have followed entirely different laws of progress. To understand this alternate history, let us step into that imagined journey from the natural environment they once dominated to the kind of society they might have built, from the cultural values that could have emerged to the scientific and technological limits they might have faced. And above all, let us ask, in that world, would there still be room for imagination, for creativity, and for the longing to reach for the stars? To truly understand this imagined world, we first need to take a fair and honest look at the Neanderthals. They were not the brutish savages that old stories once painted them to be. Instead, they were our closest relatives, a distinct branch of the human family tree that thrived across Europe and Western Asia from about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. Physically, Neanderthals were masterpieces of evolution, perfectly adapted to survive in cold, unforgiving environments. They stood shorter, but sturdier than us, with thick, powerful bones and heavily muscled bodies. Their faces were marked by broad midsections, sloping cheekbones and large noses, designed to warm and humidify icy, dry air before it reached their lungs. Perhaps most striking of all, their brains were just as large as, and in some cases larger than, those of Homo sapiens, fitting the robust frames they carried. Far from being primitive, Neanderthals mastered an advanced toolkit, controlled fire, built shelters, and proved themselves guiled hunters of massive Ice Age animals. They also ate plants, a fact revealed by microscopic starch grains found in the tartar of their teeth. But what stands out most, the strongest evidence of their humanity, was the way they treated their dead. Neanderthals deliberately buried their loved ones, sometimes even placing flowers in the graves as offerings. This symbolic act, unmatched by any other primate or early human species, suggests a depth of meaning and ritual that brings them far closer to us than we once imagined. Around 70,000 years ago, our Homo sapiens ancestors began migrating out of Africa, moving into Asia and Europe. Lands the Neanderthals had already called home for hundreds of thousands of years. This was not a swift confrontation. For tens of thousands of years, both human species coexisted across the same territories in Western Asia. During that time, there were encounters, exchanges not only of culture, but also of biology. Thanks to the pioneering work of geneticist Svante Pebo, awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2022 for his groundbreaking discoveries on ancient DNA, we now have undeniable evidence that these two human groups interbred. Today, nearly all people with ancestry outside of Africa carry a small but significant trace of Neanderthal DNA making up about 1-2% to of their genetic code. This discovery has completely reshaped how we understand the disappearance of the Neanderthals. Their story is not one of simple replacement or violent extermination, but of blending, a complex process of genetic assimilation. They did not vanish entirely from the Earth. Instead, part of them lives on within us. In this light, a world where Neanderthals had won would not mean a world without Homo sapiens but rather one where that blending had tilted differently, where the Neanderthal legacy became the dominant force shaping the future of humankind. In a world where Neanderthals had prevailed, the heart of human civilization would not stretch across continents. Instead, 
it would be concentrated in Europe and Western Asia, the lands they had long mastered and to which their bodies were deeply adapted. There would be no New York, no Tokyo, only scattered villages tucked among frozen forests. The reason for this lies not just in geography, but in biology, their enormous energy demands. The short, stocky build of the Neanderthal was a brilliant adaptation to cold climates, allowing them to retain heat far more efficiently. But the price of that strength was staggering, an immense need for calories. Estimates suggest that an active Neanderthal may have required as many as 7,000 calories per day, nearly twice the daily needs of a modern Homo sapiens man. This relentless demand for food created a natural ceiling on their population density. To meet those needs, Neanderthal groups would have been forced to live in small, dispersed, and isolated communities. The constant struggle to find and maintain such vast amounts of nourishment would have limited their ability to gather in large numbers. And without high population density, the foundations of complex social and cultural structures, the kind needed for cities, empires, or global expansion, would have been nearly impossible to build. A world ruled by Neanderthals, then, would likely have remained vast and untamed. Instead of glittering metropolises and sprawling trade networks, it would be defined by scattered pockets of survival, small enclaves of people locked in a daily battle for food, living close to the land rather than rising above it with monumental cities. Archaeological records show that Neanderthal groups were usually very small and rarely exchanged ideas or goods with distant bands. This stood in stark contrast to Homo sapiens, who built vast networks where innovations, tools, and resources flowed freely. The result of Neanderthal isolation was cultural and technological stagnation. Their stone tools, while sophisticated, remained virtually unchanged for tens of thousands of years. In this imagined world, instead of a global internet binding people together, every community would be an island unto itself. A groundbreaking discovery made in one valley might never reach another just a few miles away. Progress would crawl forward only at the pace of natural evolution and local adaptation, not through the accelerating momentum of shared knowledge and collective innovation. One of the greatest questions about Neanderthals is whether they possessed complex language. The discovery of a hyoid bone in Kabara Cave, Israel, shaped much like that of modern humans, along with evidence that they shared language-related genes such as FOXP2, suggests they had the physical ability to produce speech. Yet the ability to speak does not necessarily equal the capacity for abstract thought. Many studies propose that Neanderthal language may have lacked symbolic depth, and the ability to convey layered, abstract ideas the way Homo sapiens could. Their brain structure adds weight to this idea. With a larger occipital lobe devoted to processing vision, they may have had less neural space for the intricate connections needed to form metaphor, symbolism, or richly layered communication. In such a world, language would remain a practical tool, a way to indicate where to hunt, to describe a tool, or to warn of danger. But there would be no philosophy, no sweeping mythologies, and no poems praising the beauty of the cosmos. Conversation would revolve around the bare necessities of survival, eating, sleeping, and hunting, while the vast symbolic worlds that shaped human art, spirituality, and imagination might never have come to life. The Neanderthals developed the Mousterian stone tool industry, a significant leap forward from earlier, cruder implements. Using the Levallois technique, which required forethought and planning, they demonstrated themselves to be skillful and intelligent craftsmen. They produced a wide variety of specialized tools, including scrapers, saws, and spear tips. Yet some of the breakthrough tools that defined Homo sapiens never appeared in Neanderthal toolkits. Most notable were the throwing spear and the bone sewing needle. Without sewing needles, their clothing, though it certainly existed, was likely loose animal hides, far less effective at insulation than the tightly stitched garments created by Homo sapiens. This technological gap had deeper evolutionary roots. Homo sapiens spent hundreds of thousands of years in Africa, where they hunted wary prey across vast open savannas using long-range spears. This constant arms race with increasingly cautious animals 
drove the development of the parietal cortex, the part of the brain that integrates visual images and coordinates hand-eye movement. Neanderthals, on the other hand, often hunted more docile prey in Europe and Asia with close-range thrusting spears, which did not require the same neurological adaptation. For Homo sapiens, that advanced parietal cortex not only sharpened hunting strategies, but also laid the groundwork for symbolic art and continuous technological innovation. By contrast, in a world ruled by Neanderthals, humanity might have remained forever in the Stone Age. They would have been master stoneworkers, but without the abstract thinking, knowledge accumulation, and inventive drive necessary to push past physical limits into the Bronze Age or Iron Age. Without symbolic thought, the ability to develop abstract concepts like science would have been severely limited. While some recent discoveries suggest Neanderthals may have used pigments such as red ochre or decorated bones, the evidence remains sparse and far simpler compared to the intricate cave art created by Homo sapiens. Art, like science, is a symbolic form of expression. The capacity to represent the world, to imagine what is not directly present, and to communicate complex ideas is the foundation of both. In a Neanderthal world, the night sky would not have been a canvas for studying the cosmos, but merely a guide for nocturnal hunts. There would be no telescopes, no spacecraft, no scientific revolution. Their understanding of the world would be grounded entirely in physical experience and instinct, not in abstract theories or mathematical equations. Below is a summary table highlighting the fundamental differences between this imagined Neanderthal world and our own. Looking back at the imagined world we just explored, one can see a rugged, untamed beauty. It would have been a quieter world with less technology and a closer bond to nature. Neanderthals would have lived authentically, immersed in the daily struggle for survival, deeply connected to their environment. It would be a world without industrial pollution, without global wars fought over resources. Yet it would also be a world missing so much. There would be no great cities, no modern medicine saving millions of lives, no space exploration, and no masterpieces of literature. Most importantly, there would be no me and no you sitting here to tell and to listen to this story. But there is a profound scientific truth, more remarkable than any imagined scenario. Neanderthals never fully disappeared from Earth. Their DNA still lives within us, revealed through the groundbreaking genetic research of Svante Peabo. Neanderthal genes have shaped key aspects of our physiology today, from our immune systems to skin color to the texture of our hair. This discovery uncovered an unexpected complexity in human evolution. The encounter between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals was not merely a struggle for survival between rivals, it was a spontaneous and deeply meaningful union. The reality is this, our world is not the product of a pure Homo sapiens lineage, but the result of a miraculous blend. We are the children of two worlds, part sapiens, with its endless drive for abstract thought and innovation, and part Neanderthal, with its resilience and extraordinary capacity to adapt. So, what if they had won? Perhaps Earth would look very different. But the truth is this, it is through the fusion of both lineages that we can call ourselves human. The legacy of the Neanderthals is not locked in some alternate history. It flows in our blood and lives within our shared story. If we look closely at this truth, we realize that human history is not simply a tale of winners and losers, but one of harmony of pieces coming together and to create who we are today. The Neanderthals never truly vanished. They remain in every cell, in every breath of humankind. And that is the greatest message, value diversity, because it is the blending of differences that creates strength. If you found this story eye-opening and full of surprises, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to continue exploring the fascinating journey of prehistory with us. And now it's your turn. What do you think the world would be like if Neanderthals had truly won? Share your thoughts in the comments below.